Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at something that's been kind of causing some issues since we first introduced it into the game, which is diagonal movement in our world. So at the moment, when our guy moves side to side, he kind of... If we were to start walking down and then move to the side, he stays going down the same speed, but he's going to the side as well, so he's going way faster than anything else in the world and that kind of looks a bit or not anything else in the world but way faster than he suddenly was moving a second ago so it looks like whenever he's going diagonal for some reason he's just deciding to run faster and that's that doesn't look good obviously so we need to make a way to fix that and also we have the problem uh, because of the way we use our blend tree at the moment uh, if we're walking down like this for example and we start moving to the left suddenly our sword goes into a diagonal position because our sword is trying to go halfway between moving it being in this position for moving down and being in the sideways position for moving left so the sword kind of gets trapped in this kind of diagonal position like this so that's no good for us either so we want to fix that too and then we have our kind of diagonal movement a little bit more sensible okay so to fix the problem of our character moving too fast we're going to need to go into our player controller script and make a couple of little changes in there so i'm going to stop this running and we'll open up our player controller script in mono develop and once that's open here okay so at the moment what happened is uh, basically whatever movement we're putting in our player will start moving in that direction and what we need to do is basically say we want to check and see if our player is moving in any diagonal direction so if both our vertical input and our horizontal input have some action going on then we've got our we're, we know we're moving in the in, uh, diagonal direction so we know that we want to slow our move speed down by a certain amount but if we're going to be moving diagonal we could be moving in any diagonal so we could be moving up left up right down left or down right and in that situation what we're getting is say we could have a horizontal being uh, being uh, one and our vertical being minus one or we could have a vertical being one and a horizontal one or a horizontal minus one and our vertical one or minus one whatever so we've got like four different combinations of stuff there that could be hard to check for if we're going to just do a series of say if statements to check if um if our axis is one and minus one or minus one and one we could have like a, f a bunch of four different uh if statements that we need to work out but instead what we can use is just check what our absolute values are because we know that if for example, if we're moving on the horizontal axis and we're moving on the vertical axis, if that's true, then we know we're doing a diagonal. It doesn't matter which way we're moving on the vertical or horizontal axis. So we can just eliminate uh, needing to know whether it's moving left or right. All we need to know is that it's moving horizontally. So what we can do is you just, just get the absolute value of the number. So we can ignore whether it's plus or minus and just say, what is the number? Is it zero or is it... Uh, greater than 0.5 like we've done before so what we can do if we go down here and we want, want to make sure we're inside our if attacking uh, bracket here so we'll go just below that and just above this um, uh, curly bracket here and we'll just make up the spaces and what we notice first thing is that we're now kind of typing stuff on this line here so if I was just to make a quick little if and then some brackets like that we'll notice we're going onto this line and that's because we put this little wrapper around all this text so all of this bit of code here should really be indented one line over um, now that we because in the previous episode we added these little curly brackets and an if statement so to fix that what we can do is just highlight all of these all of this here just to below if attacking and if we go to edit up here and then format and indent selection it'll push it all in so everything will be in line and it'll kind of it just makes it a little bit more obvious to see with your own eyes what's going on here so if we are going to type in here in our little if bracket what we want to do is like i said we want to get the absolute value of these numbers so we don't want it to be a plus or a minus we just want to know if it's zero or one basically so what we can do is say uh, if math f dot abs uh, so what that does, that will return the value without any plus or minus. So in uh, the bracket uh, following that, what we can type is our input, input dot get axis. Uh, if we just scroll up here, we're doing the exact same thing as we have up here. So our get axis raw horizontal, and we'll also do for vertical as well. But we'll do horizontal first. So we'll just copy all this little bit of input dot get axis here, 
and paste it in just there like that and put another bracket at the end to close this one so now what's happening is so our input that get access raw horizontal that can be either zero or minus one or one or kind of anywhere in between as well but those are the absolute limits of it so it can go from zero to minus one or zero to one but if we're doing matf.abs that takes away the plus or the minus of it so basically it can just be zero or one is what the answer will be returned here so then we can check if that is greater than 0.5 so basically what we're checking there is if there's any input currently happening on the horizontal axis then this whole little section here will be true so let's do the same we'll put an and here so we're checking if this is true and also we want to do the same thing for the vertical axis so let's just copy this whole bit here our mat mat f onwards and we'll just put a closing bracket at the end and now instead of horizontal in here we want to type vertical and we we'll finish that line and we we'll put some curly brackets in and so now what's happening is we're checking to see if there's any movement happening on the horizontal and if there's any movement happen happening on the vertical so there has to be movement happening on both of those things at the same time and if that's true then we know we want our move speed to be slowed down because we're moving in a diagonal direction so up here we're using our move speed uh, is being multiplied by the input to control where the character is moving to and then down here so what we want to do is make our move speed be slower when we're moving there in a direction so we could just say move speed is equal to move speed divided by two say uh, because then we're making the character slow down a little bit and um, the only problem with that is of course if we divide the move speed by two and say we were going to return the move speed back to full we have to multiply it by two well what if we keep moving in a direction if we keep moving in a direction every update frame of this our move speed is going to be divided by two so every time for as long as our buttons are held down we're moving in a direction our move speed will suddenly be divided by two every single time so that's no good so what we're going to need to do is create an extra variable up above to control our move speed basically and to keep it consistent the whole way so we'll go back up to the top here we know that we're, we're already setting our move speed as being a defined value so we won't change that one so what we'll do is just down below us we're going to type in um, a private float that we'll call uh, current move whoop, current move speed so this will be how fast we currently should be moving so if we go back down here what we're going to do is we're only going to make changes to our current move speed so here we're going to say instead of it being move speed we're going to say current move speed here and current move speed will be equal to our move speed that we set within unity so at the moment if we go to our player on the player controller the move speed is set to be 5 so our current move speed will be 2.5 and basically you want to say so if our current uh, whenever we're moving in a direction our current move speed should be the move speed divided by half or, or half of the current move speed uh, or else can we put another bracket here or else our current move speed should be equal to just move speed by default so that way we know if we're not moving in a, di in a direction at any time then our move speed will just be the full five move speed otherwise if we are moving in a in a, in a diagonal then our move speed will be 2.5 so then back up here where we're actually setting the move speed to take place into the world instead of using the move speed value we're going to use current move speed so we'll do it for the x-axis here which is our horizontal and for the y-axis on the vertical where it multiplies by move speed we'll just say current move speed okay we'll save that and now we'll go into the game and we'll see how this how this works for us so logically you would expect that uh, dividing it by two because we're combining two different directions our player um, should be slowed down by half when he's only going in when he's going in the, in the diagonal so he's not looking like he's uh, going too fast but what we'll actually see here is that is going to look a little bit too slow so if we start moving to the side and then move down 
it actually looks like our player is slowing down quite a bit when we do that. So we want to be able to control what it looks like uh, and to, to be able to fine tune it ourselves. So we'll pop back into our script, go up to the top up here, and we're going to add a new variable that we're going to call, um, we'll call it public float, and we're going to call this, um, we'll call this say the diagonal move modifier. So this is what's going to control how much speed we're able to use. And instead of dividing it, we'll make it a multiply. So it we're going to treat it basically as a percentage. So it'll be move speed multiplied by our diagonal move modifier. So that's whenever we are moving in a diagonal direction, our move speed is going to be multiplied by this. And we'll go back into Unity then. Let that compile for a second. And we should see it pop up here. Eventually, there we go. Okay, so now our diagonal move modifier, we're gonna we're gonna make a move at about three quarter speed. Is kind of what I've found looks about okay. But you can fine tune it yourselves. You can fine tune it yourselves and see how it feels in your own game. So if we go to play now, we should see as we walk around, walk to the side and walk down and walk over in a diagonal a little bit. It looks much more like our player is actually keeping a consistent speed as he goes. So like I said, you can mess around with it yourself. Um, we could put it up to 0 0.9, see how that looks. That's the, that, to me, that looks like he's moving a little bit too fast. But like I said, it's all about your personal preference and how you feel. So if we stop the game, that'll go away anyway. Okay, so that's how we can limit our player's speed as we're moving around. But how can we fix our sword going into the wrong positions as it moves around in the world? Well, there's a very simple way to do that, and it basically involves just using our blend tree that we used before. So we'll, if we go into our animator down here, and we'll go into our player movement blend tree, if we keep our blend tree highlighted here, so the problem at the moment, if we actually just scroll in here, if we move this little red dot around, no, we can't actually, oh, it just previews down here in the bottom. So if we move this little red dot, this is kind of like a preview of what's going on. So you can see what's happening. The sword is kind of moving around all these different positions in between, and that's no use to us at all. So what we're going to do is, basically we're going to tell it, okay, if you're in the, if you're moving in a diagonal in this direction, you should be facing up no matter what. So basically we're saying that up and down movement is the priority. You could decide that left and right movement is the priority either, but for now we're just going to decide that it is, or you could choose one direction for each corner. But basically what we're going to do is assign a specific animation for each corner here. And rather than going and creating a new diagonal movement set, because we don't have that um, bunch of uh, drawings for our player, there's no diagonal movement tile set. So we're just going to tell us to move up or down or stuff and different positions depending on where he is. So we're going to hit our little plus thing to add some more of these again. So we're going to add a motion field and then in the little circle, we're going to deal with the up movements first. So we're going to select player move up and we're going to set it to be in this corner up here. So that'll be our X will be one and our Y will also be one. So perfect. So we've got that up here in the corner here. So let's add another one. Again, we'll go for, we're going to go for up again and this time we're going to go in this corner. So we're going to say our X will be minus one this time and our Y will be one. So we've got that filled in there. So now we're going to do two down facing movements. So we'll go for this corner here, which will be X minus one and Y minus one. And then finally, we'll do one more down movement. And we'll say our X should be one and our Y should be minus one. And now you see all the corners here are going to have a position for us within the world and we're those are the only directions we can face uh, with our player so now we can save that go back into here and we'll hit play and we should see now that instead of our sword ending up in weird positions as we're moving around if we move in any diagonal movement our sword stays in the player's hand just the way we want them to we can do our attacks still just the way we want and when we're moving up and down our sword stays in the right place and just when we're, if we're walking side to side, when we go diagonal, our player just kind of looks like he's moving up and down a little bit. 
So perfect. That's just exactly what we want to happen. It makes a little bit more sense now for our player to be actually moving at a consistent speed within the world and his sword isn't flying around all over the place into strange positions as we wander around. So thanks for watching this episode and I will be back soon with some more Unity RPG goodness. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.